American math is like a churro, and Japanese math is like a pretzel. What? This video may seem like a diss to the American education system, but please know that I'm coming from a positive place, and I 100% want to promote positive change through this video and through my channel, Math Challenge. Today, we're going to look at a sixth grade example on the area of a trapezoid, starting with America. Let's go! So in America, before we applied the actual formula for the area of a trapezoid, we used the word decomposing, which means breaking apart. So in this case, the student's prior knowledge is of squares and triangles. So the teacher will go through with them and teach them to draw vertical lines to break up out the trapezoid into triangles and squares. The approach isn't bad at all, except the homework problems are very repetitive and there's no thinking behind them. So in this example of homework, students will just literally draw vertical lines and calculate the area and there's really not much thinking behind it. In the next chapter, students learn the formula, but never really learn why or how the formula came about to be. Who cares, right? As long as they can use it. So why did I refer to American math being like a churro? Well, it starts from one point and you're doing problems all the way until the end of the churro, but it's just a flat line and there's no real growth to it. The problem here is that students aren't allowed or given the opportunity to really expand their minds and link mathematical concepts together. Now let's see how Japan does it. So contrary to America, Japanese math is like a pretzel in that it's full of twists and turns. It's not repetitive. There's lots of critical thinking and it really connects and links prior knowledge and mathematical concepts together. Now let's take a look. In Japan, students will also start by decomposing and exploring the shape. But instead of the teacher showing them to draw vertical lines, the students can explore and draw a diagonal line from A to C and create two triangles. You can also draw a line from B to D. Another way students can explore is cutting out the top half of this trapezoid, moving it over, flipping it around, and attaching it to the bottom. This creates one long parallelogram. And finally, why flip half of the trapezoid when you can flip the entire trapezoid? So if you take this out right here, and once again, flip it over, you end up with one big parallelogram right here. And this turns out to be the explanation for the trapezoid formula. So you have your base one right here, and your base two, which is the same as AD, times your height, and that's going to give you the area of this entire parallelogram, but you have to divide it by two because you created an additional trapezoid. So even though down the road students may not remember why or how this formula came about to be, I think it still creates that aha moment in class that's really special. And finally, the homework problems are really what sets apart Japan from America. So it says, what is the height? of trapezoid A, B, C, D. So it doesn't necessarily ask for the area in a straightforward way to find, find the solution. But instead, it takes you on this struggle and this journey to link concepts together. So really quick, what we can do here is because we know the base and the height of triangle A, B, C, we can find the area of the triangle by doing three times four divided by two. So, the, so triangle ABC is gonna have an area of six square centimeters. Next, we can use the base of five right here. And the height that we're trying to figure out 
divide that by 2, and we know that the area of the triangle is equal to 6, and find out the height that way. Now I'm not going to solve the second question, but you could already tell from the first question that Japanese math requires a lot of twists and turns, sort of like a pretzel, and piecing the puzzles together to link the concepts together. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time on Math Challenge. Bye-bye.